the bigger the building, the more further you're going to have to deep in, dig in the soil to build that foundation. And so for all you people that you see somebody and you just go, man, I, I wish I had a husband like that. Man, I wish I had a ministry like that. I wish I was blessed like that. I wish I had that. Well, you know what God's saying to you? God's saying there was a process that you didn't see. And today, some of you are on the process and you're hating on the process. Like, God, I, I'm going to leave this process right now. And God's saying, I want you to stay there. Because a lot of times, we feel like running away when God's doing tremendous work inside of our heart. There's three places God's going to take you if you're going to fulfill your dreams. The first place God's going to take you is going to take you to the cistern. That's the next slide. And we know that uh, God gave Joseph a dream, and all of a sudden, his brothers, they hated him for the dream that God gave him. How many of you guys know when you start telling your unsaved friends or your family your dreams, sometimes they really don't like it? You guys know what a hater is? <laughs> Are, are they only in poor room? Are they only in friend though? You know, a lot of times you go, man, everyone's been hating on me. Everyone's hating. Oh, man, there's nothing but haters in that ministry. I just tell them my ideas and they start hating on me. But you know what the truth is? Those haters are really helpers. They're not hating on you. God has placed haters in your life to really help you accomplish your dreams. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But a lot of times, God takes us to the cistern, and this is the part of Joseph's life when, you know, before this couple of verses, before this, Joseph comes up to his brothers and says, you know what, I had a dream that you guys are bowing down to me. And then a couple of nights later, he had another dream, and this time not only his brothers were bowing down to him, but even his mom and dad were bowing down to him. And the Bible says that his father, Jacob, rebuked him, but he kept those matters in his mind. And the Bible says because God downloaded those dreams in Joseph's heart that his brothers hated him for it and wanted to kill him. And all of a sudden, Joseph's alone with his brothers at the desert of Israel. And the Bible records that his brothers, they got him, they started beating him down and they threw him in a sister. And his own brothers forsook him. His own brothers forsook him in the desert of Israel. And what does that say to you and I as believers? Let me just say this. You know, in the process, a lot of times we'll feel like we're forsaken. A lot of times we feel like everybody's against us. And what you are, you, a lot of times when people get into this place, they try to get out of the system and run away from where God has them. Let me just say this. Wherever you're at today, God has you there for a reason. You know, a lot of times people think they're in the wrong place. You know, I'm married to the wrong person. I'm in the wrong church. I got the wrong job. But I want to tell you, you go to another job, you're still going to be there. Right. If you get another marriage, you're still going to be in that marriage. If you go to another church, you're still going to be in that church. You know what God wants to do? God doesn't want to change the churches. God wants to change your heart. God doesn't want to change your spouse. First, He wants to change you. God doesn't want to change your job and say, oh, my bosses are all haters. You know what? God's going to keep on taking your places like that until He does that work inside of your life. And so this process, this is a place that many of us don't like to be in the system. It's a lonely place. It's a place where the Bible records that Joseph's brothers, they got his garment, his wild orna ornamented garment of many colors that his father made for him. And the Bible says that they got that garment, they ripped it off him. They ripped it off him and then they killed a young goat and threw all that blood on that garment. And they took it back to their father and said, Jacob's dead. You know, I think from that, that part of the story, we can get a lot of spiritual revelation. The first revelation I think we can get is this, is that a lot of times we know that that garment represents the Father's favor on his life. A lot of times God rips off his favor for a season because he's going to take you to greater garments. If God never ripped off those garments off Joseph, he never would have became the Prince of Egypt. He never would have went to the greater garments. See, a lot of us, we want those garments. Like, oh, God, if I could be back in 98. Oh, God, if I could be back in 2000. Oh, God, if I could be back in this situation. God said, I'm trying to take you to a better place. Amen. I'm trying to take you to a better place. Because sometimes our dreams have to die for God to give us a greater Amen. dream. Sometimes our dreams have to die for God to birth a new and a greater dream inside of our life. You know, so... <laughs> 
Don't be sad when God rests your garments out. Don't feel, oh God, where's your favor? God, God say, I'm doing a work in your life. I'm exactly where you're at. Another thing that we see from that same story is that they came to their father, Jacob, and the Bible records that when Jacob seen his son's robe, that he started weeping. He said, oh, the fierce animal got my son. You know, that represented Jacob's dream. What does that say to you and I? That says a lot of times we think our dreams are dead. We see the bloody garments of prodigal kids. The Bible says that he got those garments and he came, that his sons came and said, you know what, he's dead. The Bible says that they took those garments over and they laid them at his feet and said, look at your son, look what we found. And you know, that's the same thing the devil does. That he comes to us and he starts showing us our dreams and says, look at it, it's over for you. Look at it, it's over for your kids. Your kids are always going to be out there serving the devil. I don't say I was a prodigal, praise God, God owned my life. The devil's going to come and say, look at your finances, they're all messed up. And you're a giver, what's God doing in your life? Look at, your, look at what's going on at your job. Look what's going on with your house. Look what's going on in your mind. And you're looking at all those garments that don't say, it's dead, it's over. But God has something in store. God is always at work, where? Behind the scenes. Amen. We know that Joseph was behind the scenes. God was doing the work in his life when Jacob, his dad, thought he was dead. You know, relating this to your life, maybe you're looking at those bloody garments right now. And God is behind the scenes doing the work Amen. for the future. Another place that God takes us, and it takes us to Potiphar's house. And we know that Potiphar's house would happen that all of a sudden Potiphar's wife, she began to come up to Joseph and kept on tempting him, attempting him, attempting him, saying, Yo, just be with me, be with me. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says that Joseph ran from her. And this is another place in the process that God's going to take you. This is another place that God's going to take you inside of your life into Potiphar's house. And maybe you're, you're there tonight. Maybe you're in a place inside of your life where, you know, the enemy just throwing all kinds of things in your way to distract you from what God wants inside of your life. Maybe the enemy's throwing all kinds of things just to sidetrack you from the destiny that God has inside of your life. And kind of like Potiphar's wife was coming towards Joseph every single day. She's coming towards him to sidetrack him from what God had for his life. You know, young person, how we got to know, I know there's a lot of young people here, how we got to know we can't be fooled by what's going on in the world. Because all it is is pain, misery, and heartache. Ain't that true? The only thing that sin will give you, of course the Bible says sin is fun, but it's only fun for sin, and all of a sudden you got the big deal of regret. How many guys know about regret? I know about regret. How many guys know about misery? You know, the, the enemy comes and says, you know, I promise you this, I promise you that. And we see all these rappers, we see Snoop Dogg, we see 50 Cent, we see all these guys. But how many guys know, you got to look to Nate Dogg too. Nate Dogg is dead. You got to look to Easy E. Easy E's dead, he died of age. You got to look to, you got to see, I'm going to look at the big picture of what happens to these people. You know, one of the great things right now that is taking the church, just really hitting the church, is pornography. And I was reading about it today, and you know, one of the things that it said about pornography, it said that pornography has a stranglehold over the church. A stranglehold. And one pastor was studying this, he began to research all this, and he said that he was studying statistics, and statistically he said that 50% of men in church view pornography. He goes, heck no, that's not true. That cannot be true. And so what he did was, he did, he started taking a survey in his church between all the men in his church, and you know what he found? It was shocking. He found that in his church, that it was beyond that. In his church, it was 60% of men. It was not only 50%, but it was 60% of men. And as he was doing all this research and study, he found out another thing, is that it's not just men. And the latest statistics say that 70% of men in church are bound by this. And 50% of women. And so this is something the enemy is going to send your way to sidetrack you to take away the dream that God has wanted inside of your life. Because how many guys know that sin kills dreams? It kills dreams that God has given you inside of your life. It kills all the destiny and all the, all the, the things that God wants to do inside of your life. 